Yeah, it has. All right. Dear Diary. You guys are in a weird mood today. I'll tell you. All right. Uh, so let's look at number one. Number one was the only problem where I asked you to do the to do this by hand. Everything else should have been done with the calculator. Uh, so it says to write the system as a matrix equation, then solve the equation by hand. So our matrix equation is going to be the coefficients matrix. times the variables matrix equals the solution matrix and we know that the solution to any of these uh, matrix equations like this. Um, the solution to any of these matrix equations is going to be the inverse of the coefficients matrix times the solutions matrix. And we know how to calculate the inverse of a 2 by 2. It's going to be 1 over the determinant. So that's going to be negative 3 times negative 5 minus 2 times 6 times the rearranged matrix. So the main diagonal entries switch locations. And the other diagonals entries have opposite signs. So because they were positive, now they become negative. Everybody okay there? Now I just need to multiply these three things together. So I have one scalar multiplication, one matrix multiplication to do. The order that I'm going to do them is I'm going to do the matrix multiplication first. Because then I won't have to worry about adding fractions at any point. So I'm going to do that matrix multiplication first. So when I do that, I get 15 or negative 5 times negative 13, which is uh, 65, and then negative 2 times 24 is negative 48, and then I for the next entry I do negative 6 times 13, which is 78 and then negative 3 times 24 which is negative 72 oops got the one-third there so that's one-third of 17 and 6 so I get 17 over 3 and then 2 My answer is x is 17 over 3, and y is 2, or you could write it as the ordered pair, 17 over 3, comma 2. Either way of writing that answer is fine. Everybody okay with that? What's up, Kate? This thing right here, that's one-third. That's the, from the 15 minus 12. So it's there also. Right? Everybody happy with that one? That was the most involved one because she actually had to do it by hand. The rest of these we're going to use our calculator to do.
All right, uh, so for two it says write the system yada 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 as a matrix equation and then solve that matrix equation with our calculator. So the matrix equation we're going to solve is this one. So again, that's coefficient matrix times variable matrix equals solution matrix. So I'll go to my calculator and type this in. So I'm going to just put this in as matrix A. Will be my coefficients matrix. And then matrix B is going to be my solutions matrix. And then to solve this, I'm going to take matrix A. Oops. Oh boy. Oh boy. Take the inverse and multiply it by matrix B. So when I do that, I get that X is 118 and Y is negative 205. Everybody okay there? Uh, problem three asks us to do the same thing. So I'll start by writing my matrix equation. And we'll go ahead and type that stuff now into our calculator. So I'm going to put these matrices in C and D. So I'm just typing in the entries for my coefficients matrix right now. goodness what did I do here how come nobody's yelling at me of course you jeepers creepers making mistakes let me go double check that I don't even I was on autopilot there for a minute I don't know what I oops what I typed in you ever do that I goobered that up something fierce. All right, so this whole thing this is going to get uh, get retyped here. You ever make a mistake happen to me? That's better. All right, and then we'll do C inverse times D. So that gives me that x is 0, y is 0, and z is negative 3. Uh, 
Uh, for 4 on, I'm asking you to do Gaussian elimination. So we need to write this as the augmented matrix. I started getting ahead of myself on the previous problem and wrote the augmented matrix there instead of a coefficients matrix. So I'm going to type this in as matrix E. God bless you. Because that was a sneeze it was appropriate to give the individual a God bless. God bless you, as opposed to like a yawn or a cough or whatever. Okay, so now that I've entered that in, I'm going to do the RREF command on that matrix E that we just wrote. You press, you go to the matrix menu and then the, to the math tab, and it's near the bottom. So when I do this, I get, well, let's make it a, let's make it a fraction. It'll be easier to see what's going on there. So this is the result I get. Is this what I usually get if I'm getting an answer? No. In particular, what row is of interest to me? The last row. What is the last row saying? Yeah, it says 0 equals 1. What's that tell me? No solution. I'm sorry, you mumbled the end of that and I missed what you... So you're using RREF? Yeah. Yep. That's okay. Yeah, we'll do it again here in a second. So for five, we're doing the same thing. So we'll write out our augmented matrix. So I'll type that in as matrix F. So I have everything entered in. I'll exit back to the main menu. Now I'm going to go into the matrix menu. I'm going to go over to the math tab. Scroll way down to the bottom till I find that RREF. It's command B. And then I'll do the RREF on this matrix F that I just made. And again, I'm getting some wild looking decimals there. So let's take a, that as a fraction. And what is this telling me? Yeah, this is the infinitely many solution situation. How can I tell that it's infinitely many? Well, if I look at that last row, what is that last row saying? Just that 0 is equal to 0, right? That tells me the infinitely many. Now, that's not the way we like to write our, or that's not the end here for us. We also want to describe that general solution set. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use those previous two rows in my matrix. So 
So that first row is saying x plus 21 over 7z is equal to 18 over 11. And the second row says y plus 15 over 11 z is equal to negative 17 over 11. I notice that I can solve each of these two equations in terms of z's. So if I subtract 21 over 11z from both sides of the first equation, I get that. And similarly, if I subtract 15 over 11z from both sides of the second equation, I get that. So what I can then say is that the x in my solution is 18 over 11 minus 21 over 11 z. My y's are negative 17 over 11 minus 15 over 11 z. And my z then acts like the independent variable, so that'll just be z. So that's my general solution. Look at how easy that was to get from that row reduced echelon form matrix, right? That Gaussian elimination really did all the heavy lifting for us there. We just had to rearrange the results a little bit to just, not only did we get the infinitely many, we got the general form almost immediately from what follows. Okay with that? And I think there's one more. Yep. So one more Gaussian elimination problem. This one might have been a little bit tricky because notice in the second row, we don't have any z's. So we have to make sure that we're putting a zero in that z column. So that's the augmented matrix that I need to write. Notice that the zero went in the column with all the z's in it, not in the x column or the y column. Got to make sure we do that. So I'm going to type this matrix in as matrix G. So 3 by 4, 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 6, 3, 2, 0, negative 25, negative 4, 1, negative 1, 12. Exit out of there. Go back in to the matrix menu from the math tab. We'll choose the RREF command. And then we'll do that on that matrix G that we just typed in, which gives us this matrix. So what should I say are my values for X, Y, and Z here? X is negative 5, Y is negative 5, and Z is 3. Everybody okay? with using our calculator to do these solvings. Um, you will need to be able to do this for the test. Um, so my plan as far as the test goes is that really the most you'd have to do by hand is to solve like one two variable system and one three variable system by hand. But you'll probably have to solve lots of two and three variable systems using your calculator. So there's lots of problems that I'm kind of interested in that I think are perfectly reasonable for you guys to do with your calculator to make the time realistic because you can't solve like five three variable systems in 65 minutes. It's probably not realistic to ask you to do that. But you should be able to do one and then a bunch of them with your calculator. So you should be able to interpret like no solution and infinitely many solution write the, like the general form for the infinitely many if you're able to use your calculator to kind of jump start you to that spot. You know what I mean? 
which I think is probably reasonable, right? That kind of allows me to look at a couple of different, you know, lots of different problems, but time is probably realistic then. Sarah? I haven't sat down to write it quite yet. Um, well, the, the calculator one should be fast, right? Like the, like a problem like this is probably a one to two minute problem. It's just a question of getting it in your calculator and writing it down. Um, as opposed to like a three variable system by hand problem, which is probably like a 10 to 15. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about when I'm writing out my test is, you know, like I try to write, you know, 45 to 50 minutes worth of questions for that 65 minute period. I want to have a little bit of leeway, but that's kind of what I'm thinking when I'm, when I'm writing one of these things. Jack? Sure. Okay, um, anybody else with questions about that assignment that we just kind of went through? Okay. So, the last set of content here, before we start getting ready for the test on this um, unit or whatever, I don't. We have. We'll still have, we'll have a day to do some review stuff, and so before that, so it won't be this week, right? Because we don't meet two more times this week. So probably beginning of next week is what we're looking at. Um, is I want to talk about some applications. So the first application we can have is like a story problem situation. So let's look at an example. All right, so you're visiting a zoo, and you're a little weird, so all you did at the zoo was count things. Uh, you counted 126 creatures at the zoo, and by creatures we're talking about, like, birds and animals, right? Everybody's okay there? 
She didn't go in the reptile house. You didn't see any reptiles, but that's okay. You're too busy counting the other things. Um, you also counted the legs that you saw at the zoo. And you counted 402 legs. And we're going to ask then how many birds and how many animals did you count or did you see at the zoo? So the first thing we should do is create a variable name. So let's use the letter B to be the number of birds. And I'll use the letter A to represent the number of animals. We're going to write a system of two equations here. So we're given two pieces of information here, right? You have 126 creatures that you saw. So what equation can I write to represent that? What's that, Kate? Very good. So if the creatures are animals and birds, we know that A plus B should be 126. The other piece of information that you're given is that there is 402 legs that you saw. What's up, my dude? So the place I saw that little bugger was underneath the cabinets there, along the wall. There was a mouse in the house here Aww. yesterday. Okay. 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 Yeah, they can't see very well, so they run the walls. Let me know when you hear it. Okay. Is that a mouse guy? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, back on track here. Um, the second piece of information we know is that there are 402 legs. What do you know about legs with regard to birds and animals? So, we know birds have two legs, and animals have four legs. What two-legged animals do you know? <laughs> Ostrich is a bird. A flamingo is a bird. Okay. All right. Kangaroo is a marsupial. Is it a is it a mammal? All right. Well, we're not counting them. We're not counting them. Anyways, continuing on. Continuing on. Continuing on, I haven't seen a lot of humans in zoo exhibits. In the exhibits, though. All right, so what equation can I write about the legs here? I can say 4a plus 2b equals 402, right? Now we just need to solve this system. What would be your preferred method to solve the system? I mean, I'm going to do Gaussian elimination with no 
but he says nothing. Why would I choose that method? People, because it's fast. And I don't have to do much. I just type into my calculator and be done with it. You know what I mean? Okay. Yes. So again, on the test, you'll be given like a story problem. And what I would ask for you from that is if you write the system of equations and then you can solve that story problem using like your graphing calculator or whatever, using either of those matrix methods. So what does this tell me then? We have 75 animals and 51 birds. Everybody okay there? Looks like you saw a lot of birds. Let's say that we want to find the standard form equation of the quadratic that passes through the points negative 3, 5, 4, 1, and 11, 5. So refresh my memory here. When we say standard form equation, what does that look like for a quadratic? It's just last chapter. We should still kind of remember this. I'll help you start. Y equals mx plus b. No. no. That's a line, not a quadratic. Yeah, a, ax squared plus bx plus c. So to write this equation, what three things do we have to know? We have to solve for A, B, and C. Right? We need to solve for three things. So how many equations are we going to need to write? Three, because we have three variables we're trying to solve for. How are we going to need to write those three equations? Well, I have a bunch of x's and y's, right? So I'm just going to fill them in to the equation that my standard form equation. So for the first point, I can say a times negative 3 squared plus b times negative 3 plus c is equal to 5. What did I do there? Just plug this x in for the x's and the y in for the y's. And I wrote it in the order that we usually write our systems in, right? Where the equal sign is on the right-hand side. What would the second equation I want to write be? What would the next equation be? Let's get it started for you. a times 4 squared plus e times 4 plus c 
is equal to 1. Again, all I did was plug in the x and y. What's the third equation going to be? 3 times 11 squared plus b times 11 plus c is equal to 5. Again, all I did was plug in my x's and y's. Everybody happy with that? Not too bad, right? How do you want to solve this system? I mean, guys, let's use the calculator. I don't know why you're sitting there looking around like, what do you want me to do? Like, I want you to use the calculator. Duh. So this is going to be, uh, I'll do Gaussian elimination again. So negative 3 squared is 9. Then I have negative 3. And I have a 1. And then I have 5. And 4 squared is 16. 4, 1. 1, 11 squared is 121, 11, oops, I said 11, and then 1, and then 5. And then I'll do the RREF on that matrix. And when I do that, I get this, which I don't love. Let's turn those into fractions. So I can say y equals 4 over 49 x squared minus 32 over 49 x plus 113 over 49. Pretty gross. That's what I get for making this up on the fly. Everybody okay with that one? Okay. Of course. All right. So we have. Uh, one more application, and this is really not a system application, but rather like a matrix application. And it's finding the area of a triangle. So Suppose you want to find the area of a triangle, and you're just given the three coordinates of the vertices. Now, you probably did a problem similar to this in your geometry course last year, right? When we ask you to find the area of a triangle, immediately what are you, what would you think you'd want to use there? Guys, area of a triangle. What would you think you'd want to be using? Michael? I don't know what this means. Pythagorean theorem has to do with the side length of a right triangle, not too, okay, not so I, much the I, area. I don't have the answer. Okay, that's okay. I, I, know, I just, it just looked like you were trying to answer. That's why. I, I thought I knew, but I didn't. Okay, that's okay. Does anybody remember? 
Yeah, so you probably would think to use the area formula for a triangle, which is one-half base times height. The problem with this, though, is if I try to do that, That's my triangle. And unfortunately, none of the side lengths of this triangle is the height of the triangle. Did you guys see that? So suppose we chose this side to be the base. We can find the length of that side just using the distance formula. That's not so bad. But then we need to find the length of that height, and that's going to be quite a bit more difficult. Yeah, so you need to find the midpoint of the base, and you need to find like the perpendicular bisector that passes through it, and it becomes like a whole thing. Guess what? There's an easier way. Alternatively, we can use this formula. So here the area for my triangle is going to be positive or negative. And I'll explain why we have that plus or minus there here in a moment. One half times the determinant of the matrix, where the first column is the x's, the second column is their corresponding y's, and the third column is just all ones. So, make a 3 by 3, so I have 1, negative 5, and then the last column is all 1s, and 6, 4, and then the last column is all 1s, and then 3, negative 8, and the last column is all ones. So I'm going to do one half times, go back in and get the determinant, that's under the math tab from the matrix menu, of that matrix that we just typed in. I type mine into matrix H. And that gives me negative 16.5. This is what the plus or minus is here for. So you just pick the appropriate plus or minus to make sure your answer is a positive number. Um, because we know that areas are always positive, right? The only reason we put the plus or minus there is because to include like an absolute value starts to get confusing with the notation because the determinants also use the vertical bar. So I didn't want to use an absolute value there. We'll just use the plus or minus and you pick positive or negative to just make sure your answer is positive. So that's really easy, right? Well, it's a heck of a lot easier than finding midpoints and using distance formulas and doing all that mumbo jumbo, right? It's easier than that because your calculator can do all of it for, for you. All you got to do is get it into the matrix and type it into your calculator and it outputs the answer for you. You know, like that's not so bad. Right? Yeah, I can handle that. 
Yeah. Okay. That's that. 